thanks for the time. Jeff hosts the show at the same time that we're on, uh, overtime on ESPN 99.1 from 3 until 6 in Sioux Falls. So you're down at the Super Bowl. What's How many Super Bowls have you been down to, uh, Jeff? Is this your, this isn't your first go-around, is it? No, this will be my this is my sixth Super Bowl that I've been a part of, and uh, over the years it's it's so funny how uh, you think it sort of get to a routine, but it always is ever changing. And whether you're on Radio Row or at Media Day or heading into Super Bowl week, or even uh, as you get to Super Bowl Sunday, there's always something new, always something different, and it's always an exciting time. I mean, does it just does it blow your mind at how much it's grown over those six different Super Bowls? I mean, what, the difference between your first one and this one, is there a major difference, or is it just getting bigger and bigger and more, I don't know, if maybe absurd is the right word for it? How does it, how's it compare from your first one? You know, I think Media Day continues to grow. I don't know about, like, Radio Row, um, because they spread so much stuff out now. Like, you got the ESPN folks in Scottsdale. Uh, you have everyone else down in, in Phoenix, and then – uh, you have some other folks spread out, I guess, throughout the Glendale area. But, I mean, I think, you know, each year is different depending on its location. You know, when I was uh, – my first Super Bowl that I went to was the one in, in Miami with the Colts and the Saints. And uh, because of proximity, it's tougher to get there. There wasn't as many, I think, fans and media members down there. And then you get to, like, Dallas. Um, you know, there was weather encompassed that year where they had the ice storm, so it, it wasn't as big. But, you know, being here, being last year in New York, you see the crowd get bigger. I think with social media, too, you have so many more people doing so many different things that ultimately you get more media members ascending on Super Bowl week. Well, you know, they said yesterday uh, there was, I think, 5,400 credentials or something put out for Media Day, which is just insane. And, and that whole Media Day is insane in itself. But the other story that uh, we caught wind of a little bit was hoping you could maybe explain a little more being down there and gone through it. Does something about a $28.50 charge or something to enter media day, is that on top of the credentials? Um, you know, actually, that is uh, what I think they were selling for fans to uh, to come down and actually check it out because you could actually buy tickets to sit in the sands and watch it. Okay. Now, for us as media members, we didn't have to pay anything once we got in. Um, you just get your credential. But uh, the twenty eight fifty, um, I was told, was for tickets for fans for coming in to check it out. Okay, so they could sit in the stands, but they can't like get down on the field and, and no, actually no, talk no, to the yeah. players. They had okay. this in the U.S. Airways Arena yesterday, so that's for the Phoenix Suns play. So they actually um, – they had, yeah, they had fans that were able to purchase tickets and just sit uh, throughout the stands. And they did that last year for the first time. Uh, they held it. We were in New Jersey, not New York, for Media Day last year um, at the Prudential Center. And so they, they allowed fans to purchase tickets as well. So, yeah, I mean, they're like scalpers out front and stuff trying to sell tickets for this <laughs> event as well. Talking to Jeff Turn, he uh, hosts Overtime on our sister station, ESPN 99.1 in Sioux Falls, now South Dakota. He's uh, out there in Phoenix getting ready for Super Bowl Sunday. Let me ask you this. You've been at this game for a while, uh, and I don't mean game as in Super Bowl. I mean the, the sports talk game. Has this deflate gate thing jumped the shark in your opinion? Are you as tired of talking about it as we are? Yeah, you know, I almost feel like when we have people on, like, uh, you know, all, all week so far we've had some really great guests, uh, you know, national folks, and I feel like we almost have to ask about it just because I respect their opinion on it. A lot of guys that formerly played in the NFL, so, you know, I think that, but I'm not spending, you know, a half a segment when I got a guy for seven minutes that I might not talk to the rest of the year. I might ask him one question on it and then move forward. I think that ultimately after the Super Bowl, it will be a big story once again when the investigation's over, whatever the findings are, one way or, in, one way or another. I think it'll be obviously a talking point moving forward. But I think the NFL, to be honest with you, has done a good job of uh, kind of deflating the story themselves because they've been able to get the media to kind of – get sick of the story yet not put as much pressure on the NFL to get the investigation done before the Super Bowl, which I kind of find to be funny because I think if, you know, if it was a, if it was a different team, maybe uh, the NFL will be a bit more expedited in the process, but it is what it is. And I think that, yeah, I think after a while you just want to, you just want to put it to bed and focus on the game. Well, let's, uh, while we're on the subject, I'll go ahead and ask you, since we don't get the opportunity to talk that often. What are, what is your take on this? What, if they find something out, what do you feel is the appropriate punishment for the for the Patriots? No, I think I think it's uh, on a couple of different levels. I think if if you found out that Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, some member of the staff of higher uh, uh, you know higher importance uh, decided to tell this this attendant that they have video of moving the footballs or any other individual to deflate the footballs to gain a competitive advantage then I think you need to find not only the organization a lot, the individual a lot, 
need to take away draft picks and ultimately a suspension as well. I think you need to set a precedent. But if it comes to fruition that we find out this was the, the most uh, devoted ball attendant we've ever seen and it was, it was a rogue event and he gets fired and we move on, if it's somewhere in the middle, which is sort of what I expect, I don't know anything specific, but I think there's somewhere in the middle – some, some sort of information, then I think you kind of go in the middle of the punishment. You, you do something like a draft pick in a later round and fine them heavily, the individual. Uh, but, I mean, we're not suspending people for life for this. And we're not kicking people out of the league for a year unless, like, Belichick deflated the football himself. Then it gets to that point. But I think we just have to wait for the information. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big Steelers fan, man. And I'm not, I'm not uh, you know, bleeding Patriot colors. But I, I think it's fair, at least at this case, because there isn't as, as much evidence known to us that we at least give them the benefit of the doubt till we find more information. Well, it's Wednesday now, so people start to roll in a little more each day as as the game gets closer. Uh, not all people have your money and can stay out there for a week, you know, so, <laughs> so they, they have to wait and come in, you know, for the weekend or whatever. But uh, how's the vibe out there now? I know the teams uh, hit the practice field today. They got media day out of the way yesterday, so now they, they focus solely on the game, but is the uh, – is the party starting to pick up a little bit, so to speak? Yeah, you know, they got all of those media members spread out. I'm actually over in Tempe and right on the campus of Arizona State, so everybody's about 10 years younger than I am over here. So uh, I, I, I know up in Scottsdale, we were up there earlier in the week. Uh, it's been a party, I think, uh, you know, year round, and this just expedites that process. And you saw it too with, uh, you know, the Phoenix Open going on up there. A lot of the locals say that's a bigger event than the Super Bowl as far as just the numbers are concerned for people coming all over the place to see it. So um, I think that event, accompanied with the fact Tiger's there, uh, you've had people in town for that already. Then it's starting to really ramp up, like you said, now with people flying in today and tomorrow. I'd say, too, you know, you always wonder sort of what the fan split's going to be. I've seen more Seattle fans. I'm I'm guessing that's what it will be because of proximity. But uh, yesterday at Media Day, I did see a lot of Patriot fans. So I assume uh, those folks up there in the Northeast are going to spend a little money to get down here. I know they had some travel issues with the weather. But uh, I think you're going to start to see, you know, on TV when you're starting to see the folks on ESPN, the crowds behind them, uh, it'll start to get much bigger as we get towards the weekend. Talking to Jeff Turn from our sister station ESPN 99.1 up in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, hanging out down in Phoenix for Super Bowl 49 coming up on Sunday. And Jimmy and I were talking earlier this week uh, about this game outside of the deflate gate nonsense. Uh, we kind of pitched the question, and I'll throw it your way too. I want to get your thoughts. Which one of these two teams has more to prove in this game? Is it is it the Patriots to show that the deflate gate thing did not affect them? Is it Seattle because they've got an opportunity to go back to back, which will be the first time uh, since the Patriots did it? In your opinion, which which team has has more to prove with this game on Sunday? I think it's clearly New England because of everything that's happened over the last ten days, and I think that everything that's happened in the last two Super Bowls because Tom Brady's had two opportunities now to get to number four, he's failed in that effort. Uh, Bill Belichick, ever since Spygate, has had to answer those questions of why haven't you won a Super Bowl since Spygate occurred, whether that's valid or not. I mean, I, I'm not one to say, but I think that you ultimately have to put it on the on the Patriots for the pressure meter because, guys, we're talking about history here for Brady. We're talking about. Uh, continuing the legacy, and we're also talking about controversy at the same time. So I think you encompass all those things together, and for me, it's definitely the Patriots. Well, Jeff, enjoy your time. I know I think we're going to try to talk to you again on Friday. Uh, we'll we'll let you for get sure. back to work and uh, see how the rest of your week goes, and we'll maybe on Friday get a, a final game pick out of you. But enjoy your dime, time down there in Phoenix, and, and we'll talk again on Friday. Hey, man, I'm only here so I don't get fined. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Thanks, you got Jeff. 28 more of those coming, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. We appreciate Thank it. You.